Okay. Now, there are a couple of functions called str p time and str f time. So the p here stands for parsing. So str p time is going to take a string, which is a date, okay? It must be a valid date, but encoded as a string. Now, you want to bring it in as a date. So type casting, if you will, but take that string and make it into a date time object, all right? So str p time will do that. P stands for parsing, right? So it has, you, you start with a string. So the first, uh, the syntax is first you say, okay, str p time, then you give this tr the string object. String must be valid date, and then comma, in what format the date is saved in the string. Because the string could be, if it is from the US, then it is in a particular, even in the US, sometimes they are coded like year first, and then the month, and then the date, right? So, you know, de depending upon what the source of the data is. So you need to know, before you can use STRP time, you need to know how the date is formatted within that string. Because now you have to specify the format after that. And here is a whole bunch of codes um, that you can, these are the valid codes that you, you, you can use to specify, okay, pass this date, which is a string, using this format. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to go over each and every one of them, obviously. Um, okay, so here is, here is a date. But it is a string, see? I have not used date, date time function here. This is just a string. So DT3 is just a string, okay? And this string has year and then a hyphen and then two digit month, hyphen, and then the uh, day of the month. So this year is four digit year. So if you go to this list and you look for, okay, so here, percentage Y, lowercase Y, okay, so is year without century. Okay, so that's two digit, lowercase Y. Percentage uppercase Y, that's four digit. Okay, so that's what we have to use here. So now, we, and, and, and by the way, I, STRP time and STRF time, these are functions in the date time library. But only date time uh, date time, date time, and del time delta. Those are the only four functions we imported. Okay, uh, let's do this. Okay, I'm, uh, I have my VV working now. <laughs> Hopefully, we can we can do this. Okay, go ahead and you have VV running. Yeah, get VV running. You need what? Admin. Yeah, yeah. You have to enter your password there. Yeah, you you need you, you need uh, two-factor authentication there. You have to. Uh, uh, there is a push. Have you have you installed uh, Duo uh, two-factor authentication in your machine? No. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'll show you how to do it uh, afterwards. But what is the problem right now? Uh, I'm probably the one. But I was just wondering. If 
name, date, time is not defined. So you have to run the port. That's the reason. See, you have to you have to run the go back and run this. Run this line. It's not seeing date time because you have not run this. Okay. Sure. Uh, so now since we did not import strp time in that line, we imported those four functions. So those four functions, since we specifically imported them, we can directly use them without you know, invoking the library first, because they are now directly available from Python. But since we did not import strp time, so for us to be able to use that, you have to prefix it with the library from which that function can be accessed. So that's why we had date time, that's the name of the library, dot strp time, and then dt3, so that's our string, okay, and the first item is four digit year, so we have percentage uppercase y, okay, followed by a hyphen, so I have a hyphen here, okay. all right, and then I have a two digit month. So if you go back here, you see percentage M month as a zero padded decimal. Okay. So zero one, zero two, zero three, and then ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. But if it does not have a zero padded, if it is one, two, three, and then ten, eleven, twelve, then you put a hyphen M. These are the two, and if you have uh, uh, the month, abbreviated month would be percentage lowercase b, and if it is full month name, percentage uppercase b. So, so you, you need to look for the code that's appropriate for the way in which a particular part of the date appears in the string. Okay, and use that particular code, which is what I have done here. So hyphen percentage M, and then uh, day, so here, uh, where is that? Okay, so day, okay. Again, percentage D is the date of the day of the month padded with a zero for single digit dates. If it is not padded with a zero, then you have percentage hyphen D. Since these are padded, hopefully, you know, we don't know whether the <laughs> uh, single digit is padded or not. So you have to look at the entire column and then see how the date is coded. So now what happens is that TT3 is converted into a date time object okay, with the year the month and the date, the day of the month, and then we have the time part of it. Okay, I did not save it. If you wanted it saved, then you have to put it into a variable. Okay. So strp time, so that is string parse time. So that's how you parse the string. So here is another example. Okay. DT4 is January 21. Right? So, and then there's the space in between, 2005, another space, and then the time. Okay? Again, the same function. And since this is not available directly, you have to specify the library name, dot strp time. So now this is dt4. Now, the month comes first, and the month is spelt out in full. So that's percentage uppercase B. And then there is a space. Okay, this space is 
that's what indicated here the space. Okay. And then percentage D, space, percentage uppercase Y for four digit. Okay. Now, the, the hour is here. So next is hour. Let's see what hour is. Uh, um, okay, so here percentage H, uppercase H, is like that. Okay, uh, and then if it is not padded with zero, and then we have um, twelve-hour clock and twenty-four-hour clock. H is for 24 hour clock, I is for 12 hour clock, and then percentage P says, okay, now this has a suffix for afternoon or uh, before noon. Okay. So that's what you see here. So your percentage, 12 hour clock, right? Uh, and then there is a colon. So we have a colon here. And percentage, M for minutes, so let's look at M here. Again, we have padded with zero or not padded with zero. Okay, percentage M. And then at the end, um, here we have PM, and there is no space between the end of the time, 33 minutes, and then the PM part. So that's why. There is no space here, here also. Percentage uppercase M, percentage P indicates that at the end, we have the AM or PM part. So once you run that, so you get 2005 for year, one for the month, 21 for the date, and then 13 for the hour, and 33 for the minutes. So that's how it's stored internally as a, as a date. All right. And DT4, okay. Um, I'm not sure why I have this again. Oh, I didn't save it. So here I didn't save it. So, so how do you find particular part of it? So now I'm going to save this is the same thing. I'm going to save it into DT5. And then if I say DT5 dot ear, now this time, remember, ear uh, is something that uh, is part of the date. It's a, it's a property of date. So since DT5 is a date object, dt5 dot ear will give you the ear part of it. Okay, so dt4 is not defined, so I have to run that first. Okay, and then dt5 month, dt5 day, and then dt5 hour, and all of that. So once you have a date object, then you can look at a particular property of that date object. I get it. So if you want to look at only the month, so you can look at the month uh, of that date. Okay. And, uh, and if you want to output, okay, so strf time is string um, function, string format time, sorry, string format time. So you need to provide a date object to it, and then the format. This is for printing. So you, you have a date that you want to print it out. Okay. So you have a date object. Now you want to print it out in a particular way. Like you want year first, and then the month, or year first, the, the day, or, and then the month, or, or month first, and then the day, and then the year. Whatever way you want to print, so you give the format of how to print, so that's what strf time is. This is strp time for parsing 
a string into a date data. STRF time is to take a date object and then print it out with a, the given format, whatever format that you want to use. So here we have DT2, okay, which is that. Okay. Now, if you want that date to be printed with the entire month name spelt out, and then a slash, and then the date, slash, year, and then a space, and then the time with AM, PM at the end. Okay. So then you take that date and use the STRF time function. Okay. Formatting. And then you give the format that you want. So you want the, the, the month to be spelt out in full, so percentage uppercase B. And then a slash, the date, slash, four digit year, and then we want a space. Okay, and then a 12 hour clock, uh, 12, 12, hour in 12 hours, then a colon, the minutes, then a space, and then is it AM or PM? So percentage. So it takes this date. DT2 is a date object. It has the data stored in DT2 is a date. And then you apply this format to that date, print it out. Now finally, time interval. So that's time delta. So you use the time delta function, and then you can specify what kind of time delta you want. Okay, sometimes you may want, so you have uh, the higher date on today's date. And then you want to figure out how many weeks the employee has been with the company, or how many months, or how many days. Okay, or if you have uh, order date and then shipping date, and then you want to see how long did it take between the time the order was received and the time the order was shipped. So you, if you want it, you know, in what time delta we want. So you specify a time delta and specify what kind of time unit you want to use. So you can use days or seconds, microseconds, and so on and on and on. So these are the different options available. So you know, time delta weeks equal to one, so then it says, okay, this is how it is stored. So number of dates is seven. Okay. And then you can use that, so time interval in days. So if you have uh, DT2 is date time now. Okay, so I'm going to, date time dot now is another function available in date time library. So it's going to get you the current date. And it's going to include date and time. Okay. And then time interval, so this is, okay, you're subtracting one time from another. So current time minus the DT one that we saved early on. Okay. So now this is going to be a time interval. Now time interval is this. So that is the time between these two is 3,965 days, so many seconds, so many microseconds, okay. Now, but that's not what we want. We want that time interval in number of days, okay. Then you take the time interval and divide by time delta of any unit that you want. You want it in number of days, then you take the time interval and divide by time delta specified in days. Day is equal to one. So this time delta, the denominator, is one day. Okay, so now it's going to give you the same information in number of days. Okay. Now if you want it in weeks, then you take the time interval, divide by time delta, and then you specify that this time delta is in weeks. So you say weeks equal to one. Now you can add adding time delta to a time object. So you, you want to take DT2, and then you want to add 10 days to this 
to that date. Okay. Then you take that time, uh, date time object and add a time delta. So time delta, you can specify what kind of time delta you want. You could say weeks equal to one, or year equal to 10, or days equal, to, or seconds equal to 50, whatever the time unit that you want to add. So to do arithmetic with date time object, you use the time delta. Uh, 